Hello, Hello out, out there, there in Twitch. Twitch. Hope, Hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic Monday. Monday. Here, Here at Green Oaks, Oaks Gaming, Gaming, it is currently Monday, 6.30 Central Standard Time. And that means it's time to go on some journeying as we create, delve, and work on the game worlds that we create and explore together around our RPGs. So while we take a big part as GMs in creating the worlds, the amount of input that the players also have on our game worlds is immeasurable. So definitely an aspect that, while I don't cover in depth in this show, definitely needs to be called out and mentioned. Tonight we are going to dive right in with a quick recap and then get into our next part of the games that we have been building. So you can see on the big screen here, I've got my monster manual ready, I've got my dungeon master's guide ready, and I do have some mostly, mostly inked maps. So I have been working on these. I've been talking about it in the past couple of streams, but the regional map for Golden Gate and some of the communities around, you can see, started to put the hills in that the players will have a level exploring. There will also be forests in there. I've not gotten it done yet. I was hoping to have it done. You can still see I've got lots of pencil marks everywhere. I've got a lot to do yet on it for coastline and a lot to do yet anyhow. But it's progress. And our city map. So you can see Heron's Bay where the ships will land and then the canals are mapped out. So now I'm adding in buildings and I'll go through and do roadways and walkways and all of that good stuff. And then this is going to be the basis for our sewers. So in level one, the party will have to uh, go through and do kind of a, a monster hunt in the canals. And then in level two, they'll have to go into the sewers. So the sewers will emulate and I'm not going to do a full map for the sewers. I'm just going to use the layout here and just roughly map those out on graph paper for my own self and hoping that the players don't get lost in the sewers. With that being said, we have to kind of acknowledge what's come before and how we got where we're at. So for this campaign, I'm designing it to be a level 1 to 20 campaign. And I broke it up into the tiers of play, starting with the local heroes. Now we've built our adventurer day one, which is going to bring them from first to second level. And that is with the canals. We've built the level two, which is going to bring them from level two to level three in the sewers. Now they're level three. They've got a lot more options as far as uh, resources and spells and all of that good stuff. We want to get them into the wider world in the locality, still in the locality, but beyond just the town itself. So day three is going to take one and a half days one and a half days to get from level three to level four. These are adventuring days, so not actual days. So basically that means they're going to have to do six and three, so nine total medium encounters to go from level three to level four. And we want to have those in kind of the woods and fields. So taking our adventure day planner, we're going to need two of these, two of these, because we need to use 1.5 adventuring days. And we know they're going to be in the woods, the fields, outdoors, basically, beyond the city walls. Now, a lot of the aspects have not changed. I'm going to use both of these sheets co-jointly, basically, with our monster sheets as we build out this adventure basically is what it is. Think of this as one module that our characters will go through or will take our players through one module. This is going to be the equivalent of a module to get them to level up. So filling this out, we know the theme on this level is all about vulnerability of the meek. That is our recurring theme for the first four aspects. The tier one is all about vulnerability of the meek. Now environment, I'm going to put 
you can see I switched pens there, woods and fields. And then party level, at this point, they should be third level. And then average days is 1.5. And I'm going to put on here 1 of 2. And any considerations that we want to have here. So we know that they have delved into the canals. We know they've delved into the sewers. Are there any considerations we want to take into here? Now, this is a place for me to add notes for uh, how to best challenge the party. What kind of things are they looking for? What kind of things can I do to uh, really set the stage for them to really show that they're those local heroes? Now, I don't have any big considerations. Just as a quick uh, kind of recap, um, the last one, the considerations we had were the cultists were new to the sewers. Cultists were new. So I suppose I could put on here, uh, cultists have fled. That could be a consideration that we need to take into account as we're setting up descriptions of the area and really looking at what kind of things they're going to encounter. Excuse me, one moment. Caught that cough, so you didn't have to suffer through it with me. All right, so we know we are going to have one and a half. So for that half, I am going to take out right away I know I won't be able to do a deadly. I know I can't do two of those hards. And I would only be able to do half the day. So all of these are off. Off, 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 off. Can't do all of that. Now we don't have to do the 1.5 adventuring days all in one. We could. It could be one full long day that goes kind of overnight and everything. We will break it up. The thoughts for myself is if you break it up too much, and you allow too many short rests, too many long rests, anything like that, there's never a challenge for the characters. They never feel challenged. And therefore, if they're never challenged, they breeze through everything. And that can be uh, less rewarding for the players as well as for the GM. So it's something to think about. What type of play aspect are you going to be bringing to the table? Make sure to communicate that to your players and make sure that they understand that and are bought into it because you want to make sure you're all on the same page. So for me, I love to challenge my players. So this aspect here, this 1.5 days, I'm going to have it be in one fell swoop. I'm not going to stretch it out over a long haul. This 1.5 days is going to be in one fell swoop. Now I say one fell swoop, I don't mean one day. They're not going to have an over-crammed, packed day. I am just going to have it be part of the same aspect. When they get out into the wider world, the woods and fields area, it will take quite a while for them to get to their destination. They'll spend a full day there and hopefully camp out and, and um, you know not have any hard aspects then the next day is going to be a regular adventuring day, and then the following day is going to be a half a day. So before they can get back to town, they'll have to stand guard, they'll have to camp out in the wilderness, they'll have to be unnerved a bit, they won't be able to go to the inn, behind the walls of safety, they'll have to be creative in managing their uh, feats, their spells, all of their resources to manage that 1.5 days. So it's going to be a little more challenging is what I'm hoping to be able to build in my adventuring day. So I'm going to put that out there. Um, one day away. Now for that 1.5 days, how do we want to uh, really kind of do it? Part of me is thinking that we're going to start actually with the 0.5 and then have them camp out think that they're, you know, reserving, that they've met the biggest challenge and everything, and then the second day, give them a whammy with a very challenging encounter. And part of me is thinking that could play very well because of the environment we've set. Now, something has driven the cultists out of their comfort zone into the city sewers. So what has driven them out? And when the characters go out there to explore and adventure, 
is that word getting back to whoever's driving the cultists out. Now we've talked a little bit. I've got some mess. I've got some mess. Let me adjust here just real quick. I've got some miniatures that we built some villains for that were goblins on wargs. And those were aspects I wanted to use for this level. So I've already got a mindset of goblins on wargs for the primary villain. But I don't want them to necessarily confront these goblins on wargs day one. I want this to be like sighted, um, maybe harried once, but then that will be the final confrontation. So to make sure that I've got good balance, I want to look at my adventure builder. This breaks down number of CR rated creatures by level. So for level three, we'll be in this row here, basically easy, medium, hard, or deadly. And what I want to do is actually pull the monster manual, and I'm going to look at the goblin boss stat block. Because it was Wednesday when we built this character, I just don't remember off the top of my head, and um, I've got it in a different in a different stack basically. Uh, goblin boss is a CR one, and how about? A warg is a one half. So one and another one is a half. So if we go to our column and look at CR1, two CR1 creatures would be an easy encounter. Three, so if you put the two wargs in there with them, um, you're getting up there into a medium encounter. A medium encounter is great. That's what we want to do. However, I like hard encounters. So I am going to actually break this one up a little bit. The goblin bosses are going to be uh, a hard encounter, two goblin, or I'm sorry, five goblin bosses would be a hard encounter. Um, because I'm going to have extra XP by only having two and uh, two wargs, I'm going to be able to build a bigger encounter so I could have goblins actually accompany the goblin bosses as we do this. Now that requires some math because we need to look at the adventurer aspect, how much experience point would that equate to and then where can we spend it. So if we're looking at the level one hard, we're looking at six CR1s. So I'm just going to grab some scratch paper here and grab that monster manual again. I should have just kept it handy instead of popping it under that sheet. Now Goblin Boss are 200. So that would be a total of 1200 XP that we can spend for this encounter, for this third level. Um, oh no, I'm, I was wrong. That would be deadly. So we're going to change it 1000 XP because it's a 5 CR1 for a hard encounter. So we get a thousand XP basically to spend. So we're going to go back to the warg just because I want to make sure my balance is here. Because I use um, a kind of rules as intended, making sure that my balance is good helps me maintain challenge but not make it too difficult. So your wargs are basically a CR 0.5. So uh, 100 XP. So I've already got 600 XP with two goblins, two warg, which leaves me 400 XP to spend. Now this is where you can get the modifiers in to adjust 
uh, up and down how much XP you get. Uh, it is a good thing to do. However, I usually avoid that because I can always downgrade some of my combatants so they're not as difficult. Uh, but the modifiers do help. And again, we're just pencil whipping a lot of this uh, just to present initial information. So your goblins are a CR one quarter. So 0.25 and they equal 50 XP. So that would be eight goblins. So for our last encounter of this adventure, which we're going to have on level two, I want to have a hard encounter. And I'm actually going to do it on the full sheet. I'm going to change this to two of two and make this one of two. And Adventuring Days 1.5, I'm just going to copy everything around. Uh, this is woods and fields. Uh, they are third level. And then cultists have fled. And they're one day away. All right. So for my last aspect of the day, I know I'm not going to have a deadly encounter at all that day. I'm going to have a hard encounter, though. And that is going to be two goblin bosses, two warg, and eight goblins. So these would be like the foot soldiers. And that's going to take away my mediums and easies below that. So there is my hard encounter that the party is going to end on with those two goblin bosses, the two wargs, and the eight goblins. That's going to be a heck of a battle because my plan is to have the eight goblins kind of go in for it and the two goblin bosses to ride around and kind of encircle. They're going to be more mobile. They're a little more tactical. One of them is a little more brutal with their damage. So it will be a challenging encounter for my party. Now, because of that, I don't want to have any more hard encounters. For this day. This is the day where they'll defeat the goblins and then at the end of the day be able to go back to town to heal up and sell some goods and all of that good stuff. How challenging do I want to have this day? I haven't really decided yet. So going back to our chart of third level, if we have medium, uh, depending on the level we have, so let's say for instance we want to have one more goblin skirmish. Um, that you're looking at a medium is going to have 10 goblins. So that's already a little bit tougher than what they're fighting here as far as numbers. If you play it well, it could be more challenging for the players to take those aspects in. Using terrain, using tactical uh, gameplay, if you're looking for those tactical aspects. Now me, I'm a lot more of a storyteller. And so it isn't always necessary for me to have that tactical aspect. But for challenge, because I know my players are going to build um, at very the most, I don't want to say OP, but they're going to build to, uh, to be able to be as close to OP as they can. So why not throw in a medium encounter here? And I'm going to have this one be actually early in the morning. They're going to have 10 goblins. So there we've got another medium. Now we've got three more encounters that we can do for that day. Do we want to have it that way? I do like the thought of the recurring goblins. Um, I don't want to have constant repeat battles because I thought about doing two goblin uh, skirmishes 
which would get us seven goblins each. Um, but that's a lot of combat to go through for me for my sessions. I can generally get two, sometimes three combats in a session, in a game session. I've already got two, one of them a little bit bigger, more intense one. So how much can I do in one aspect? I'm trying to break it up. To think about pacing as well is going to be important. Let's instead look at what other kinds of encounters we have for those tiers. I'm going to go to the index. Now we're out in the uh, world and not dealing with urban. We've got forest, grassland for fields, and we could pull in a little bit of hill, but I'm going to focus mostly on forest and grassland creatures. And this is just the Appendix B going by the uh, environment that we're going in, which is important on why we want to pull that in. Now we know from our aspects, we're level three. Let's look at some of these funky ones. We know we're not doing any deadly. Um, I'm not doing any hard on this day, right? This is our day two. Um, so I'm stuck with mediums and easy. So there's one CR4. Let's see what we've got for forest in a CR4. A banshee, a coatl, a knoll fang of uh, Inigo, a were boar, and a were tiger. Hmm, were boar could be kind of cool. But I don't know if I'm feeling it. I don't know if I'm feeling it. Let's go down to uh, CR1 and just see what we've got there. Brown bear, bug bear, dire wolf, dryad, fairy dragon, giant hyena, giant spider, giant toad. There's our goblin boss, half ogre, harpy, tiger, yawn tea, and pure blood. Or I'm sorry, yawn tea, pure blood. So I'm going back to cultists, right? Let's uh, get a little bit of a map going here to help me think. So the roadway we know kind of skirts the forest, and then the forest is here. I'm going to say the cultists had some type of a shrine right in the center, or not the center of the woods, but off the trail. And whatever this shrine was that they worshipped at, they also had some dwellings up in the trees. Now the goblins have run them out. They are no longer in uh, these woods. The goblins are now kind of taking control. But are the goblins the only thing that got them away? Was there any that stayed behind? And here's what I'm thinking. Because I like introducing a little bit more fantasy stuff, what if we have, I'm just going to jot some notes down, a dryad, um, A brown bear, I mean it's a start, let's look at what other things we have here, what's a, an easy one, we could get a CR2, let's see what we've got for two, uh, Onkeg, Awakened Tree, Bandit Captain, Berserker, Centaur, Druid, Ettercap, Fairy Dragon, Giant Boar, Giant Constrictor Snake, Giant Elk, Knoll Pack Lord, Grick, Lizard Folk, Shaman, Ogre, Orc, Eye of Grumsh, Orog, Pegasus, Swarm of Poisonous Snakes, Were Rat, and Will o' the Wisp. Mm. Now they're level three, so getting some more funky things here could be kind of cool. An easy one. I am thinking. Awakened tree. 
that's going to be an easy one. Uh, this is a medium and a medium. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then if we had a medium, so we've got three there. We've got three. Do we want to have them on the same day? I'm going to say we're going to do the triad. I'm going to say, so the dryad is actually, uh, was not happy with the cultists, but is even more unhappy with the goblins. So we'll put a pool in here, right? Our tree opens up and has a pool there. We'll have the dryad be nearby. Um, in route to it, so we'll say they have to take a path. We're going to have a brown bear encounter in route. And then the awakened tree. We need ten more goblins. The awakened tree and the brown bear will have on the first day. That's on them getting in, starting to drive in some of that mysticism and everything. So I need one more medium or two easy at level three. That's a single CR2, two CR1s, four CR1 half, oh that's got some cool ones. Uh, let's go with blights lights. I'm going to move 10 goblins and we're going to do four blights. Uh, that'll be vine blights. So there's a rough day. Let's go to the way in. <coughs> Excuse me. As the characters are making their way in, we will have a brown bear encounter just as they are getting ready to camp. That'll be the last one for the day. Now on the way in, we'll also have them do awaken tree. And just to confirm, that was a easy CR2. Yep, so just a single awaken tree. And on their way, we'll also have, let's see, what's something that could be kind of challenging? One quarter, they would have seven blink dogs, boar, constrictor snake, Elk, giant badger, giant bat, giant frog, giant lizard, giant owl, giant poisonous snake, giant wolf spider, goblins, kenku, needle blight, panther, pixie, pseudo dragon, sprite, swarm of ravens, winged kobold, and wolf. I actually like sprites. Oh, and that awakened tree is actually an easy. All right. And then <clears throat> let's go with, we're going to do two more easy ones. Um, let's go with. Um, mm 
<laughs> one half is four a swarm of insects. That was seven sprites, one awakened tree, one brown bear, and then we need one more easy one. Let's go with this is day one. Day one, let's go with I just want to look and see something here on our cultists are one eight. Cultists, that would be eleven one eight. Do we have cultists moving in or moving some of the last stuff from the woods? 11 cultists. It's a lot. That is a lot. Hmm. Or we could go with something like twig blights. This is a tough one for me. Do we have another intro on goblins? I am wondering. Because they're one quarter, that would be seven goblins. There we go. So day one, as they're making their way, they're going to encounter seven goblins, seven sprites, four swarms of insects, one awakened tree, one brown bear. So these ones, remember, these aren't all combats either. I anticipate the goblins will be a combat. Seven sprites I want to have more fun with. Um, giving some information as well as just kind of being spritey. Um, the swarm of insects, definitely a challenge. The awakened tree, I'm viewing this kind of as the uh, awakened tree on Wizard of Oz where it's making fun of them and throwing the apples at them. And then the brown bear is going to be sniffing around. Uh, as they're setting camp. So there is the first day of adventure. And then the second day, they're going to wake up to a goblin ambush uh, because um, these goblins here will have these goblin bosses watching them from a distance. Uh, same with this one here. They will be off in the distance. My hope is to uh, lure them away a little bit. But I may switch these actually and have them woken up by the dryad who sees that they're not destroying the forest and gives them some further information on the goblins having come from the hills and uh, some aspects that uh, maybe a magical item was taken out of the area that the cultists were at. Uh, the blights, uh, the vine blights I want to have with them chasing the goblins, confronting some goblins and then confronting the goblin bosses with their foot soldiers. So that's kind of how I'm planning this adventure day. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a lot. Um, that's the most we've done so far. So I want to, uh, before we go any further, start jotting down my creatures. So for that, I need to grab my creature logs. And I just grabbed a stack here. Now, I use these. If you're interested in using them in your games, just let me know. I am happy to uh, send these out. So we know the first thing they're going to confront are goblins. And we know there are going to be seven of them. So 
So I'm going to section some places off for armor class. We're going to grab up our monster manual and go back to our goblin page. Now these are standard goblins. So they are small humanoids and they are neutral evil. Just so I know how to play them. Now their armor class is 15, which is leather and shield. Super important because your characters will want to loot all the bodies and carry all the stuff back to sell it. Uh, your hit points, you average 7, but you've got uh, 2d6, so your max is 12. So I put those maxes there because that's what I'll actually use and then adjust accordingly uh, based on how challenging the encounter is. Uh, we'll pop in the stats. I know that took a little bit longer than last time, so I'm running out of time. Uh, some of this we may not get to, filling out all of these character sheets and uh, talking about it. But that's okay, because when we get to the end of our first tier, we'll put everything all together nice and neat. Uh, put a bow on it, as I like to say. Uh, so the characters can unwrap it and we'll have to repackage it time and time again each level that they go in. And... We know they are a one quarter CR. They do have Nimble Escape. Which is going to be great for their combat turns. Plus four to hit, five foot reach, one target. It's a 1d6 plus two slash, and short bow. It's ranged, plus four to hit. That's 8320, one target. And I hit as 1d6 plus 2 piercing. Now the good thing about that is I can reuse that uh, the sheet or just reproduce it for each of my different goblin encounters without having to um, do it all on screen. So there's a goblin. Let's go over real quick our sprite. So this is one that I am, oh let's do the treasure real quick. Uh, I am just going to do the eight copper pieces each and call it a day. Nice and easy. So sprites for me, this is an interesting one. Um, I don't use sprites a whole ton. Um, I think in the last uh, campaign I did was one of my youth campaigns. Everybody seemed to uh, enjoy them. And I just use them as like mischievous, kind of like the brownies in Willow, almost. The good thing about this is they are neutral good. So depending on the characters, uh, how they act will determine how much of a fight these uh, little sprites put up before fleeing. And again, it doesn't always have to be a combat. I think these types of encounters are fantastic to be able to provide information and um, really allow your 
characters who are not like combat focused moments to shine in your campaign. So not super hard to kill should your party go that way, but and 40 foot fly. Pretty weak, but dexterous. And I really want to use these sprites to give information about a magic item that will that the cultists were uh, creating or had that the goblins stole. Ultimately, that's the goal. I want continuation into the hills, into the goblin lair. Checking my time. And long sword, which is a laugh. A needle. One slashing damage, and we've got a short bow, uh, which is ranged, plus six to hit, and then we've got 40, 160, one target, one piercing damage, DC 10 con save or poisoned for one round or no one minute uh, if save is five or lower target falls unconscious for one minute. Uh, they also have heart sight. So DC 10 charisma to no alignment. And they also have invisibility. So again, just a fun little opportunity for me to throw in some, some fantastical elements into the campaign. How are we on time? Okay, with that, let's try to blaze through the last three for our first half day. Uh, this one is Swarm of Insects. We're going to have four of these. I use these quite a bit in many of my campaigns, actually. Uh, the swarms of insects are pretty good because they're just, they're more annoying for the characters than anything else. They don't have to be deadly, just annoying, which is why it's an easy encounter. Uh, this is a medium swarm of tiny beasts. And unaligned, armor class of 12, which is natural. Uh, hit points, 22 on average. 5d8, so that's 40. And their speed is 20 feet, 
and climb 20 feet. So I'm thinking um, like wood beetles, uh, boring beetles, types of, uh, you know, wood beetles that are going to uh, just swarm up onto the PCs. So just nasty. Give me the willies just thinking about it. Uh, Dex is a 13 plus 1, uh, 10. Uh, intelligence is a 1, minus 5. Wisdom, a 7, a minus 2. And Charisma, a 1, minus 5. Put that one way over there. All right. Uh, resistant. 2. Bludgeon, Pierce. Slash. Uh, immune to charm. Frightened. Grappled. Uh, paralyzed. Petrified. Prone. Restrained. Stunned. Now they have blind sight. Ten feet. And passive perception of eight. Now they are CR one half, so 100 XP. Uh, no languages. Tactics, they do have swarm. So Occupy another creature space. Uh, they can move, regain, or can't regain hit pro points, any of that. Uh, bites. This is a melee. That is going to be a plus three to hit. Zero foot reach. One target. And this is 4d4 piercing, or 2d4 piercing. Now that's if below one half hit point. Just irritating beetle swarm that are going to be biting and gnawing, and maybe it's like termites. Oh, that'd be a good one. Big old thing of termites. Now, awaken tree. And this has got me thinking of the tree on uh, Wizard of Oz, the old apple tree. Just a grouchy disposition because uh, the cultists and now the goblins. Huge plant, uh, unaligned. This is a CR2, 450 XP. Depending if the characters get it to be friendly and everything, I'd still award it as an encounter. They don't have to defeat it in combat. For me, it's more about how do they deal with the encounter. Are they successfully dealing with the encounter? Uh, so armor class is 13, uh, which is natural. Hit points, 59. Um, this is 7d12 plus 14. Now I'd have to calc that son of a gun out because I'll have to come back to it. I don't have a uh, phone or anything near me. Um, all right, speed is 20 feet. So lumbering along, 19 plus 4. Dex is 6 minus 2. Constitution is 15 plus 2. Intelligence of 10, 10, 7, minus 2. Uh, skills, false appearance. Uh, indistinguishable. Um, they are uh, vulnerable. Fire, resistance to 
to bludgeon and pierce. They have a passive perception, 10, uh, one language known by its creator. So this one here, I'm going to do Elven. And actions, they get a slam attack, which is a plus six to hit. A ten foot reach, one target, and that's three D six plus four bludgeon. And depending on how the characters interact with that will determine whether or not they have a good or bad encounter with this awakened tree. And then lastly, for this first half a day, we're going to go with a brown bear. Let's get to a brown bear. blend of fantastic and more realistic uh, creatures in these encounters just to uh, really challenge the players to think a little bit about the game world and view it fantastical but also possibly deadly so that's why these bits of realist uh, creatures are in here. Uh, 11 natural. Where are we at on time? All right. Uh, hit points 34 on average, 4d10 plus 12. So that would be 52. And then speed of 40 foot, climbing 30 foot. So pretty good. Wow, pretty tough. 19. Dex of 10. Con of 16, pretty resilient, not too bright, but they know to stay out of danger. And perception, plus three, now it is spring, so uh, this could be one who has just woken up from hibernation, and that's why it's uh, diving out. Smelling those adventurers. Keen smell. Uh, that's advantage on wisdom. Perception. Checks relying on smell. Uh, they get multi attack. Uh, one bite, one claw. So the bite is a plus five to hit. Five foot, one target. One D eight plus four piercing. And then a claw is also a plus five to hit. Five foot. One target, 2d6 plus 4 slashing. All right. So that is our initial day. Now you can see we didn't give very much treasure. The goblins had a little bit of treasure. I'll go through and think about the sprites, whether or not they're going to have any treasure, but kind of leaning towards no because they're not going to invite the PCs I doubt towards their homes uh, but they're more there just to give some information in my aspect that's the treasure they'll give is talking about a magic items that the cultists created or had that the goblins stole and took to the hills uh, the insects are there just to slow down use up some resources give them some annoyance the awakened tree is there to show that this is a fantastical world the brown bear is the big challenge of this first half day. And then the next day, they're going to start out with a dryad. 
um, encounter in their camp or near their camp. They're going to be set upon by goblins. They're going to have blight, uh, vine blights come up to attack them as they're working towards getting to the goblins. They're going to have another goblin attack and then a final goblin confrontation with the goblin bosses that they'll see in the previous two, kind of in the background in the mists in the woods. These two goblins on these wargs riding around them, um, but always out of, uh, you know, reach, out of range. So that is the Adventure 3 for this campaign. Um, I am actually pretty excited to finish filling this out and get it into a final state. After this one, we're going to have one more adventure that we'll build for fourth level. Uh, for the party when they are in fourth level they'll go through I'm going to finish building this one out then we'll pretty it all up um, this is the woods uh, cultist camp and uh, yeah I'm pretty excited where we're going so far uh, if you're catching this video live make sure to uh, check out our schedule see when we're on live again uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and then Saturday in the studio painting. If you enjoy it make sure you leave a comment. If you catch this on VOD let us know what you think and of course give us that follow. We're not looking for subscribers just more followers so we can continue to grow and develop. We've got about three minutes until 730 but I think we're at a good stopping point so I'll be able to work on this as well as my maps off screen and until our Wednesday show, I hope you have a fantastic early part of your week. And of course, don't hesitate. Let us know where will your adventures take you. Bye-bye.